Hello, I'm Richard Stallman, founder of the GNU Project. In 1976, I developed the first Emacs editor with some help from Guy Steele. Then, shortly after starting to develop the GNU operating system in 1984, I wanted an Emacs editor for it, so I started writing GNU Emacs in September 1984. Several years ago, we decided to move many of the Emacs Lisp packages outside the core Emacs distribution into a separate package archive that we call the Emacs Lisp Package Archive, ELPA. There were two main reasons for this. One is to make the Emacs distribution smaller so every user wouldn't have to get all the packages and will install all the packages. And the other reason was to make it possible to release individual packages separately from Emacs releases. <clears throat> now, at that point, somehow we decided to support loading packages from uh, a variety of different Emacs list package archives. And ours would be called the GNU ELPA but ELPA could be any other. Now, I think that naming was a mistake. We should have meant, we should have decided that ELPA referred to our package archive and any other package archive should be called some other name. Oh well, uh, this is a mistake, I believe, because it leads to a lot of confusion. It would have been clearer if we had uh, used the other naming. Because the difference between having a package in core Emacs and having it in GNU ELPA is purely a practical convenience matter, convenience of distribution and convenience of maintenance, we wanted to be able to move packages between the two whenever that was convenient. So to make that possible, we insisted on getting copyright assignments for packages in GNU ELPA, just the same way we do for packages in Core Emacs. Having the facility for installing packages from package archives led to a tremendous boost in the development and release of Emacs packages. Unfortunately, there was a problem with the way that was done, for the most part, the developers of these packages wouldn't even tell us about them. They posted them in another package archive where we didn't know about them and where they no attempt was made to try to fit them into Emacs so that they could make sense as parts of the Emacs distribution. This led to both moral problems packages that depended on non-free software in order to be usable, and technical problems because the developers of those packages didn't coordinate with us about how to make it useful and convenient and clean to have them in Emacs. So the idea of non-GNU ELPA is an effort to smooth these things out. The fundamental plan of non-GNU ELPA is that we won't ask for copyright assignments for those packages. So we won't be able to put them into core Emacs, at least not easily, but we will have some control over how we distribute them. We can put any package into non-GNU ELPA as long as it's free software. If we like it, we can uh, set up that way for users to get it. We could put the package in exactly as it is if there's no problem at all with it. We can make an arrangement with the package's developers to work on it with us and maintain it directly for distribution by non-GNU ELPA. But if they are not interested, we can put it in ourselves. And if we need to make any changes, we can do so. So non-GNU ELPA is not meant to be just a way that 
others can distribute their packages. It's meant, at least in a minimal technical sense, to work with GNU Emacs and we'll make changes if necessary so that it works smoothly with GNU Emacs. And <clears throat> this means that we're going to maintain it differently from GNU ELPA. Well, GNU ELPA is hosted in a way that is actually rather inconvenient. It is one single Git repository, and so anybody that has access to write it can write any part of it. There are many different packages in there maintained by different people, and we have no way to give each one of them access to per own package and not to the others. Well, with non-GNU ELPA, we plan to fix that. The idea is to have a single Git repository where you can download various packages from, but they won't be maintained there. Each of those packages will be copied automatically from some other place, probably some other repository where the right people have access to work on it. And this way we can avoid giving a gigantic number of people access to every part of it. So far, non-GNU ELPA is just a plan. We need people to implement the plan. So if you would like to help, please write to me. I think this is a very important step for progress, and it's got to be implemented. Thanks, and happy hacking.